In this video, we'll take a look at, on this page, some laws of exponents, and then on the next page, solving some basic exponential equations. And the first law we're going to take a look at here says that a to the power of x times a to the power of y equals a to the power of x plus y. And it says here when multiplying powers with the same base, and that's what these are, a to the x and a to the y are two different powers with the same base. Actually, they could be even be the same power, I suppose. It says you keep the same base, so notice that the answer here has the same base, and add the exponents. And an example of that is, uh, in example one, b cubed times b to the fourth is equal to b to the seventh. So you keep the same base, these were both b, and you uh, add the two exponents, three and four add to seven. Now, to show you an example of why that's true, b cubed means three b's multiplied together, b times b times b. b to the fourth means another four b's multiplied together. So if you look at this, how many b's are there all together that are multiplied? There's seven. There's three here and there's four here. So that's why we would simplify this to b to the seventh. And that's why you keep the same base. Some people think that the base has to be, for example, b squared or something like that. Well, these are all b's and these are all b's, so the answer has to be a power of b. Second one, a to the power of x divided by a to the power of y is a to the power of x minus y. When you're dividing powers of the same base, again, they're both base a, you keep the base and subtract the exponents, and it's the first exponent minus the second one. And so an example here, number 2, x to the 8th divided by x to the 6th would be x to the power of 2, or x squared. Now to show you why that's true, if I'm dividing x to the 8th by x to the 6th, x to the 8th means 8x is multiplied, so there's 8x is multiplied, and we're dividing by x is 6, so here's we're dividing by there's 6x is multiplied there. Now, when you're dividing this, a whole bunch of x, pairs of x's divide out, or some people use the word cancel, and it's kind of like this. There's 6x in the bottom that divide out or cancel with 6x in the top. So it's like that whole thing, that huge thing here, after you divide all this, this is really just 1 because like this x goes into this x once. This x goes into this x once, etc. And so this is actually just 1. And what we're left with is x times x, which of course is x squared. There's two x's left multiplied, so the answer is x squared. If you have the third law here, a to the x to the power of y, this is called the power of a power rule uh, because we have a power and it's raised to another. Uh, it's raised to a power of y. And so when taking a power of a power, you raise the base, the a, to the product of the two exponents who multiply the x and y. That's, that's why this is x, y here. So in example three, it says x squared cubed would be x to the power of six. You multiply by the two, the two by the three. And to show you why that's true, x squared cubed means there are three x squareds. And so x squared is x times x, there's the x squareds, and there are three of them all together. Here's one, here's two, and here's another x squared. And so if you think of this just as x times x times x times x times x times another x, notice that there are six x's there all together, and so the answer should be x to the power of six. Last law on this page uh, deals with a negative exponent, a to the negative x, and this is more defined to be 1 over a to the x. I'll show you an example of why that should be 1 over a to the x. So basically a negative power means the reciprocal of the equivalent positive power. So a to the negative x is 1 over a to the power of positive x. Notice the x down here in the denominator has a positive for its exponent. Now, so example four, x to the negative three is equal to one over x cubed. Okay, it's the reciprocal of x cubed. Now, to show you an example of why that should be true, I'm going to evaluate uh, something that works out to x to the power of negative three, or one over x cubed. So let's say we were dividing x to the fifth by x squared. According to um, this law, sorry, up here, when we're dividing, you subtract the exponent. So 2 minus 5 would be negative 3. And so x squared divided by x to the fifth is x to the negative 3. Now, I'm going to actually evaluate this same thing in two different ways. Uh, using the subtracting the exponents rule, we get x to the negative 3. Okay, so that evaluates out to what's on the left side here. Now, another way to evaluate x squared divided by x to the fifth is to raise two x's 
on the top, that's the x squared, divided by 5x is in the bottom. And so this x divides out with this x, and this x divides out with this x. Now, when those x's divide out, there's actually a 1 left up here. Some people think there's nothing, but x goes into x once. So there actually is a 1 left on top here. And then what's left in the bottom is x times x times x, which is x cubed. So two different ways we evaluate x squared divided by x to the fifth. One way we got x to the negative 3, and the other way we got 1 over x cubed. And since we evaluate the same thing in both cases, that means that x to the power of negative 3 and 1 over x cubed must be the same thing. There are two different ways of writing the same thing. Now one other law here before we get into uh, solving a few uh, exponential equations and um, actually two things I suppose if you include the, this example goes with this. If you have a fractional exponent like a to the power of x over y then the denominator of that fraction means a root and the numerator at the top means a power. So this is the y-th root of a to the x. So for example in number 5 here, if we're asked to evaluate 16 to the 3 quarters, then the 4 means the root, the 4th root, and the 3 means the power. So this is the 4th root of 16 cubed. Now, there's two different ways to write that. You can actually write the uh, exponent, the power here, uh, sorry, really the whole thing is a power. The 3 is an exponent. You can write the 3 in here or outside. So you can evaluate the uh, power of 3 first or the root of 4 first. It doesn't really matter. I'm actually doing the root of 4 first here. So these are two different ways to write the same thing. The 3 can be inside or outside. It doesn't matter. The reason I normally do the, uh, the root first because it's a smaller number. So the fourth root of 16 is 2 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, like 4 2's multiplied, is 16. You can also evaluate that with your scientific calculator. So the fourth root of 16 is 2, and so we have 2 cubed now, which of course is 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Now, solving basic exponential equations, if we have x to the power of a, equals x to the power of b, notice the two bases are the same, then that means that a and b, those two exponents, have to be equal. And that's the whole idea behind solving these uh, exponential equations, and we're going to take a look at two examples here. So if you have two powers with the same base, then the exponents have to be equal. Put two powers with the same base that are equal, the exponents have to be equal. Notice that all these laws, and even the ones in the previous page, all these laws only apply if the powers have the same base, or you can write them with the same base. Now, in uh, example 6 here, we're asked to uh, solve 2 to the 5x equals 8. So what we want to do is write those, both these things with the same, as powers of the same base. So 8 is 2 cubed. So we change the 8 into 2 cubed, and now the uh, bases of both of these powers are the same. And it's not like we divide out the 2's. We don't. If those bases are the same, then we can say that this exponent is equal to this exponent. So we can set 5x equal to 3. You kind of just drop the bases. You don't divide them out. So don't put a, like a line through them because you're not really doing that. You're just saying we know that the base is the same, so the exponents have to be equal. And so if we divide both sides by 5 to solve for x, we get x equals 5 thirds. Last example here in B, 3 times 4 to the 2x plus 1 equals 192. Now if you have a number multiplied by your power, divide that number out first. So we'll divide both sides by 3. These 3's divide out and 192 divided by 3 is 64. Now we have a power of 4 over here, so it would be nice if we could write the 64 as a power of 4. And 64 is 4 cubed. Now, if you cannot write that as a power of 4, then there's other techniques to solve the exponential equation. Okay, that we're not going to cover here. Uh, they're involving something called a logarithm or a graphical method. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now the bases are the same here, so we can say this exponent equals this exponent. So 2x plus 1 equals 3. And so if we subtract 1 from both sides, we get 2x equals 2. Dividing out the 2, we would get x equals 1. 2 times 1 gives you 2. Now a graphical method for solving this same equation here would look something like this. We would graph either using a table of values or technology, something like Winplot or a graphing calculator. We graph, and this is actually the graph of 3 times 4 to the 2x plus 1. That's what it looks like. It's an exponential curve. And when we're solving this equation, 
if we've graphed that function, what we're trying to do then is find out where is the function equal to, or where are the y values equal to 192. Now if you look at the scale here, every block vertically is 20. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. That's 180, that's 200. So 192 would be, well, just barely above the middle of 180 and 200, because the middle would be 190. So if you go to dotted line right across there, you're looking for where it hits the, uh, the curve. And of course, that's right at 1. This would be at 1 here. This point is actually 1, 192. So since it crosses at 1 right there, that's why x equals 1, because that 1 represents the x coordinate of that point. So that's how you would solve that graphically. And that's the end of the lesson.